Trade and shipping is yet another area being disrupted by technology as movement of goods increasingly involves movement of digits. We welcome now from Chicago, Jet McCandless. He's Project 44 founder and CEO. Project 44 is it now get this, digital transportation and logistics network that provides access, transparency, and visibility to global trade networks. Does that all fit on a business card? I'm going to ask him what it means in just a second, but still with us in the meantime is Megan Green of Manulife. So I said those words. I think I knew which word meant, but put it together for us. What do you really do? What is what does your company do? Great. We are a technology company for the transportation and logistics industry. Essentially what we're doing is we're digitalizing uh, the movement of goods globally. And so, and so what do you do that's different from what's been done before? How does it change shipping? How does it change getting goods from one place to another? Yeah, I'm glad you asked the question. Uh, shipping's been around for thousands of years, obviously. And whether you're in the room you're in or wherever all the viewers are in, Look at the chairs, the desk, um, the clothes you have on. All that got there by a, a truck, train, plane, or, um, or a boat. And for so long, this has been done through manual processes like emails, phone calls, even fax, um, some EDI type things. Well, we're modernizing it uh, with API type technology where machine can, machine can talk to each other in a synchronous way. So that sounds faster. Is it cheaper? Uh, it, it's less expensive, but it also, uh, the, to move the good itself uh, becomes much less expensive. And then the carrying cost uh, from a CFO uh, point of view, less, less inventory that these companies have to keep. And it provides a better customer experience, which of course leads to uh, lower CAC uh, and a higher, higher customer retention. So yes, absolutely, it's cheaper. So in success, and I'd love to know what success looks like, what does it do to employment? It sounds like a lot of people who now are moving around those pieces of paper aren't going to have jobs anymore. Well, what we found is that many of our uh, customers redeploy those, those folks internally. Usually, um, it's a pretty re uh, manual, redundant type position that most folks aren't that excited to actually come in and perform and do. And so a lot of the progressive companies use it as an opportunity, as enough cost savings to retrain those employees, maybe um, offer a SQL database class or something of that nature, and then repurpose them to do something more meaningful in the organization. They tend to have the domain knowledge, understand the flow of goods, uh, so there's a big opportunity for them to add value in other ways in the organization and in the supply chain. So, Megan, is that a value-add conversation, or is that really a tech deflationary conversation? So, I think it's more a tech deflationary conversation. It's great if you are reskilling people. It's hard to turn paper pushers into high-tech coders, right? right? So there is a gap that yep. has to be um, driven. You know, Amazon, though, will say ever since they brought in, you know, Amazon Robotics, they've actually increased their labor force by 300,000 jobs. And they may have added that many people, but yes. how are they getting paid? Um, they're probably not in, in the highly wage, high wage, high tech sectors. Um, so I think it probably is deflationary. Um, and you know, while some jobs are moved around, net net, do we have more jobs as a result of these technological developments? It's unclear. We just can't conceive of the jobs that will crop up around this kind of stuff. We can assume that some of the people who are made redundant by technology will find new roles. Um, but net net, I think we'll probably find that more people are unemployed as well. And what does our economy look like in that world? I mean, are we better off to ask a simple question? Yeah. So um, I think what ends up happening is we all have to work a lot less. And in Silicon Valley, they'll okay. say it's great. Exactly. We all work less. We, you know, our apps are all free. We just enjoy our time. Um, I think in reality, you know, housing and agriculture are, are already pretty automated. We still have to pay for those. So you need um, some kind of income for that. So ultimately, I think we may end up with a universal basic income. It's got, you know, huge problems. You'll need a massive social schism in order for politicians to ever get there. But I, I think it's probably unavoidable. So Jet, take us into this new world. If you sure. really do succeed to the full extent that you want to look like what does the world look like and how does it change the way we do business yeah absolutely so at project 44 uh, we're looking for ubiquity so we'd like our technology to be to be everywhere um, I think uh, when we have these tailwinds for uh, supply chain Amazon we have a lot of universities that are uh, training folks to be supply chain experts the net net at the end of the day is um, software is going to solve these challenges. Uh, it will optimize uh, every potential order that's out there. Uh, we'll move to a liquid inventory situation. Uh, so we see inventories reduced here stateside and across, uh, globally. And the end consumer will be able to get product uh, much less expensive and much more quickly. All right, thank you so much, Megan Green, Manulife Chief Economist. So great to have you on set. And Jet McCandless, Project 44 CEO and founder.